Hey there and welcome back to the video. For people who are new to the channel, I'm Johnny, I'm a photographer and right now we're in a cabin on a photography trip in the northwest of Scotland. And in this video I want to talk about taking unique photos. I think the main reason we all take photos is for personal fulfillment and one of the most fulfilling things that you can do is take a photo that feels unique to you. So in this video, I just want to go through a whole number of ways to help you do that. And the first of these is simply to get uncomfortable. If you are uncomfortable, even slightly, you're already on the way to taking a unique photo. So this could be waking up really early in the morning or being out in the cold or staying up late knowing that you've got a hike off of a mountain in the middle of the night. Obviously be safe. But when you're uncomfortable, you know that you've put yourself in a situation that most people won't. But a great way to take a unique photo is to stack up all of the different things that make it a hard photo to take. Another great way to take unique photos is to remember that there are loads and loads of hidden gems right where you are. Even here in a very popular landscape photography spot uh, in the northwest of Scotland, you know, I, I could go on and I have done in this cabin. I've jumped on the internet to look for photography locations in this area. However, if I just went out and explored on foot, I'm likely to find places that other people haven't or see them in a context that other people haven't. But don't discount the areas local to you. For example, I live in Shropshire. Shropshire isn't really a very well talked about part of the UK. It's beautiful, but it's not really, it doesn't really make it into any of the magazines or anything, which is, which is great for me because I live there. But, um, but there are so many kind of local hidden gems that mean that I can take unique photos. I can get photos that other people wouldn't have seen because they're local to me and they've taken me years to find. So explore your local area and don't discount it as a place to take unique photos. This next point is probably my favorite. It's almost the secret to taking a unique photo and that is using foreground. The way I like to think of this, okay, imagine you're in a car and you're driving along, you're a passenger and you look out of the window you might see a landmark in the distance and that landmark stays still. It stays kind of constant, but everything in front of you is flying by very, very quickly. That's the foreground. Now I like to think of it that way because that's how fast the foreground changes. Just a few meters and you've got a totally different photo. So let's say you've turned up and you want to shoot this kind of landmark, this popular spot in the distance. The best way to kind of get your own shot of that is to really experiment with all of the different foreground. And I don't just mean take different pictures of the foreground, shoot it in lots and lots of different ways. For example, I took this picture that I put up on the screen of the lonely tree um, in Clamberis uh, in Snowdonia. Now this is the most photographed tree probably in the UK, but I managed to get this shot, which maybe isn't technically a traditional landscape shot, now this is very much kind of my style, my kind of go-to, but I've not seen the tree photographed this way. To get this shot, I shot it on an 85, really far back from the location. So I managed to kind of frame the tree with the kind of stuff all on the outside. And you don't have to overcomplicate it. It could simply be that you find a different rock or a different tree in the foreground. Foreground is a really great way of having a constant landmark or you know popular location or a mountain in the background and just totally changing the scene with the foreground. So experiment with that. And for the next point, I think we have a tendency to look at what other people can do and say, oh, well, it's all right for them. They can do this or it's all right for them. You know, they, they, they've got time or they've got energy or they can get up the mountain or, or whatever, or they've got all the gear. Use your own advantage. You know, if you're young, you might not have enough money to buy the best gear, but you're fit and strong and you've got time. Whereas if you're middle-aged or later in life, you might have more resources, you might have more money, you might have better gear. So use that to your advantage. My unfair advantage is that I'm pretty fit and strong. I can do a long distance and I'm pretty resilient to the situation. And I'm quite good at just committing to something and going like, well, it's gonna be awful, but I'll go. Another great way to get unique shots is to restrict yourself. It's very easy to just kind of get all the gear and then use it all. But I have found that when you restrict yourself to maybe one lens and go out and experiment with that, that's when you will find that you're getting the most unique shots. Uh, or you're shooting something that should really be done a different way, but you're doing it differently. And you find that you get something interesting and unique. Recently, I've just been using my 90 millimeter um, 
macro lens, but I've not been shooting macro, I've just been shooting um, at a range. And I found that I've got a lot of my favorite shots just shooting on this lens um, and things that I wouldn't have expected. I've really kind of got my eye in on this lens and I'm finding that I'm predicting the shots much better. I've only got to that point with this particular lens by restricting myself and saying, okay, I'm only gonna use that lens. And I guess that kind of leads me on to the next point, which is break the rules. Literally think about the rules and do the opposite. It doesn't hurt, you know, it can't hurt. We've all got plenty of space on our SD cards. You know, in the old days when we're all shooting on film, yeah, maybe you want to be careful with, with that shot and get it just perfect, but it doesn't really matter, does it? You could just go with your camera if you really want. It doesn't really make that much difference. So break those rules. Look at what the rules are and just simply say no, actually. If, for example, you're framing it and you've got your foreground just in the bottom lower third, put it in the top lower third so that your subject is right crushed up at the top and you look at the bottom here. It might just be that you get home and you crop it in and you realize, no, this isn't a shot of the subject, this is a shot of the foreground. And that goes with every aspect of photography. So look at what the rules are, look at what you're doing because you're probably following the rules, which is, you know, they're there for a reason because they work, things like, you know, symmetry, rule of thirds, these different compositional tricks, they, they're there for a reason, they do work. But in some situations, it's good to just go, what are the rules? What are those compositional rules? I'm just gonna do the exact opposite and see what I get. Can't hurt, right? This next tip is actually one of my favorites because I use it all the time. You might be at a popular location where you've kind of got a shot in mind, the one that you want. Take that first. If you're looking for unique shots, take that shot first so that you've got it out of the way and you can be like, okay, I've got a safe shot. I've got what I came for. What else is there? Let's just explore. Now let's just wander off down there, wander off over here. If you don't do that, then sometimes you can be being precious with the location. You can be like, no, I'm gonna stay right here um, because what if the light changes? What if, what if it becomes even more perfect than it is right now? So I'm not gonna wander off. Whereas if you just take that shot and be happy with the shot and say, okay, this is the shot I got this time. If it gets better, I'll come back another time. I'll come back in the snow or I'll come back in, in the mood, whatever. Take that banger shot first so that you can then say, okay, let's experiment now. What else is there here? It kind of just gets it out of the way. It's a great, great thing to do. Something I would highly, highly recommend is to look at other styles of photography for inspiration. I would say that my landscape photography is heavily kind of inspired by a lot of the street photography that I see. A lot of the techniques that I use work in street photography because they're a great way of isolating a subject when you've got a lot of depth. So I'd highly recommend a great way to kind of break out of the box a little bit and to try and experiment is to get inspired by those. So take a look at some opposite types of photography. It could be portraits, street photography. Just look at what they're doing and try and apply that to your photography. And for the next tip, I'm gonna contradict one of the earlier ones, which is to get some new gear. Um, you should be happy with the gear that you've got, but getting new gear can often just totally open up the potential. So for example, when I was much, much younger, I got my first camera and it came with the 18 to 55 kit lens. And I was really enjoying that, but it was when I got my 50 mil 1.8 prime lens that everything kind of changed. I was like, ah, oh, this is how you get that look. And I only got to that point by buying some new gear. Every time you buy something new, you kind of open up your horizons a little bit and you can think to yourself, okay, this is, this is interesting, this, this 14 mil or this, you know, this 70 to 200, whatever it is. And slowly you start to figure out how you can use that and you find yourself applying your own unique personal creative brain to that piece of gear. So a great way, you know, if you are stuck in a rut is to just buy something new. It's not the silver bullet, I promise you. Buying things is not a great way to improve. However, if you're feeling like, you know, you, you kind of understand where you are at the moment, pushing the boundaries a little bit is a great way of doing that. And renting something is a, is a good way of kind of experimenting with stuff. I can't rent gear because I destroy basically everything I have. <laughs> so I can't rent lenses um, unless I want to pay a massive excess. But you can because you're probably much more careful than me. So this is actually my final day in the cabin. I've had an amazing time up here in the northwest of Scotland. If this is the first video of mine that you're watching, then what we've been doing up here is going off on trips. And usually I don't do tips videos. 
I just go off and sort of talk about the photography. If you do want to catch up with what we've been up to here, some of the trips that we've been on, some of the, the wins and the fails uh, that I've kind of put myself through, on this photography trip, then you can take a look at those videos on the channel. And I really hope that you kind of can use at least one or two of the tips in this video to find something in your photography that makes you feel fulfilled, because that's the most amazing thing. When you can take pictures that make you feel fulfilled, creative, that's what it's all about. So I hope I can help you do that. Thanks very much, and I will see you in the next video.